Welcome to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast with Dat Boy Mo 629 Discussing everything fitness and everything motivation. Here is where you will get your fitness education and motivational fix. Now, here's your host, Dat Boy Mo 629 What's going on, everybody? It's that boy Mo629 coming to y'all once again with the Started on the Finish It podcast. Today, we're going to talk about body dysmorphia. Last week, I made the announcement that I uh, disabled my Instagram account. Uh, this week, I'm back with the fitness tip. And uh, we're going to talk about body dysmorphia, man. For y'all that don't know body dysmorphia, I got it actually from the Mayo Clinic. I got, I got a uh, piece of paper in front of me called body dysmorphic disorder i'm actually recording this a little off tangent i'm actually recording this in my car outside my crib and there's like a uh, a whole lot of wind going on actually i don't know why these kids are riding their bikes in the wind the wind like gusting like blowing like 50 miles an hour and then they decide to go on a scooter and a bike down the street but anyway we about to talk about body dysmorphic disorder, and it's called body dysmorphia. And what it is like if you're in the fitness industry, or if you you go to the gym, you work out, or you just before if you're in the uh, the change module model, if you are contemplating and pre contemplation of going to the gym, working out because you're not satisfied with your body, there's this thing called body dysmorphia, and even the most fit people out there suffer from this right here. So what is body dysmorphia? Uh, so basically, uh, this disorder is a mental health disorder in which you can't stop thinking about one or more perceived defects or flaws in your appearance. Um, a flaw that appears minor or can't be seen by others. You may feel so embarrassed, ashamed, and anxious that you may avoid many social situations. So basically, uh, when you have body dysmorphic disorder, you intensely focus on your appearance and body image, repeatedly checking in the mirror, grooming, and seeking reassurance, sometimes for many hours each day. So when you suffer from this, you actually you target a specific part of your body or more than one part of your body when you're like, I'm not satisfied, this does not look like I, it needs to, people want to think I'm fat, and I'm going to give you all a little tidbit. I'm going to give you all a little spoiler right here. I myself suffer from this, I would say, not majorly, but a little bit, you know. I'm always looking at my stomach. I'm all, I'm very, very insecure about my abs. I've always wanted a six-pack. I've always wanted to look a particular way with my abs, you know, so when my stomach stick out a little bit, if I eat a lot and I'm heavy carb, you know what I'm saying, water weight gain, I tend to wear baggy clothes to kind of cover it up. So you're not alone out there. Even me, that boy Mo 629, this, you know what I'm saying, in front of y'all, I always talk to y'all and all that stuff. I'm always in front of the camera taking pictures, whatever. I'm always, you know, uh, insecure or self, you know, self-conscious about my stomach area. So symptoms. Symptoms of a uh, body dysmorphic disorder is uh, being extremely preoccupied with a perceived flaw in appearance that to others can't be seen or appears minor. Uh, strong belief that you have a defect in your appearance that makes you ugly or deformed. Uh, belief that others take special notice of your appearance in a negative way or mock you. Engaging in behaviors aimed at fixing or hiding the perceived flaw that are difficult to resist or control, such as, such as frequently checking the mirror, grooming, or skin picking. Attempting to hide perceived flaws with styling, makeup, or clothes. Constantly comparing your appearance with others. Frequently seeking reassurance about your appearance from others, having uh, perfectionist tendencies, you always feel you must be perfect. Like I said, even the most seemingly secure people out there have insecurities about their body. 
Uh, another one is seeking cosmetic procedures with little satisfaction and also avoiding social situations. I have like a leaf tornado going by. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm going to stay on, I'm going to stay on tangent, y'all. I'm going to stay on tangent. This, this, this is crazy. This goes to prove you can record a podcast anywhere. I'm recording this in my car right now. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? You can probably hear the wind in the background too. But... Uh, preoccupation with your appearance and excessive thought, excessive thoughts, and repetitive behaviors can be unwanted, difficult to control, and so time-consuming that they can cause major distress or problems in your social life, work, school, and/or other areas of functioning. Uh, this, 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 this is serious, y'all. Why I'm talking about this on the start, on the finish of podcast, because we're talking about in the fitness world. Uh. You may excessively focus over one or more parts of your body. I said that before. The feature that you focus on may change over time. The most common feature people tend to fixate about include. Now, I'm just reading this. I haven't skimmed this over. I haven't looked at this before. You know, I just seen it from the Mayo Clinic. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to point this out and I'm going to talk about it. So the most common feature, y'all, is face the nose, complexion, wrinkles, acne, or other blemishes, hair, such as appearance, thinning, and baldness, skin and vein appearance, breast size, muscle size and tone, that's the fitness, and genitalia. You know, you know, men are very, very insecure about size because they've been perceived out there that, you know, the bigger the better. And women have been uh, uh, misconceived by size, like the bigger the breast, the better, and all that stuff. So... And preoccupation with your body build being too small or not muscular enough, see, muscle di- muscle dysmorphia, that's what that's called, occurs most exclusively in males. Insight about body dysmorphic disorder varies. You may recognize that your beliefs about your perceived flaws may be excessive or not be true or think that they probably are true or be absolutely convinced that they're true. The more convinced you are of your beliefs, the more distress and disruption you may experience in your life. Now, this 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 mental disorder right here, as you can see, is very crippling. It's very crippling to how you live your life and the way you move forward in your life uh it can actually cripple you and keep you at the crib where you don't want to do nothing because you're so insecure about how you look all right went to see a doctor basically probably a therapist but went to see a doctor shame and embarrassment about your appearance may keep you from seeking treatment for body dysmorphic disorder but if you have any signs or symptoms see your primary care provider or mental health professional Body dysmorphic disorder usually doesn't get better on its own. If left untreated, it may get worse over time, leading to anxiety, extensive medical bills for like plastic surgery, severe depression, and even suicidal thoughts and behavior. So, this is one of the things that I try to tell you guys about with mental health, mental fitness here. Mental fitness is critical to your physical fitness it's critical always work on your mental fitness first because without that mental fitness your physical fitness is going to suffer whether you're too stressed out or whatever if you're too stressed out you you're either going to not eat enough or you're going to eat too much you're going to binge eat which means guess what your physical fitness is going to suffer because you're going to gain weight or you're going to lose weight or you're just going to be overly stressed and your cortisol levels raise and you're going to gain weight that way anyway your stress hormones so, body dysmorphic disorder in the fitness world is many, many ways people, especially with men, that this is that this is uh, an issue. Common examples are once like 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 the article said, muscle size. Like men feel that their chest isn't big enough, their arms aren't big enough, their shoulders aren't big enough, their quads aren't big enough, their calves are too small. Where you become insecure to the point to where you don't even want to show them because you're afraid of what other people look like, or how other people will see you. With women, it 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 it. More so, I, I guess, from a fitness standpoint, yeah, from 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 body fat, from an image, you got this ideal mindset that the perfect woman looks like this, or the perfect woman looks like that, and you don't fit into that mold. So that is a form of body dysmorphia right there. So I mean, I I'm not a therapist. 
All right, like I said, I got my own issue that I need to tackle, and I am tackling them. I'm tackling my issues. I need to tackle my own issues here. But, however, seeing a therapist is very, very, very critical and very important to get you over the hump and veer you in the right direction to tackle this this issue that you have, this problem. The body dysmorphia, not just in fitness, but just overall, is a big problem. But in fitness, it is a huge problem where people work out and they have this disorder. They're just not big enough. They're not satisfied. They don't think this and they don't think that. Like I said, I'm one of them. Like, I look at old pictures of myself, and I'm going to be honest with y'all here, honestly. I look at old pictures of myself from about two years ago. I'm 168 right now, 168 pounds. So I'm, I put on about, I want to say about 10 pounds, maybe. I'm not sure how much of that's muscle. But my body fat percentage went from 11% to 15%. So that's 4% body fat. Now, y'all might be saying, oh, that's not nothing. I wish I was 15% body fat. But there's levels to this right here. <laughs> I'm telling y'all there's levels. And when I say there's levels, it's because that... And you just, you, if you listen to me, you 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 probably like you're seeing how out of whack it really is, because I'm I'm bitching about and complaining about being 15% body fat when that's still like ideally lean from an average standpoint. But but my standpoint and my goal is to be 10% body fat. Now I, I know, and if you go underneath under 10% body fat, your sexual functionality decreases. So you have to have a certain amount of body fat as a male. I'm not sure about the female body, but as a male to be able to perform sexually because of the hormones and the fat, something of that nature for testosterone output and all that stuff and erectional, erectile dysfunction and stuff like that. If your body fat is too low, then you have a higher probability of ED, which is erectile dysfunction. So you want to keep your body fat as a man... As a man, unless you get some help or whatever, some people for 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 the most part, you see bodybuilders out there, you know what I'm saying, you know that you know that's ripped and all that stuff, and claim that they're this and that, that they're that and all that stuff, which might be the case or whatever. But they probably get some help with you know some kind of like injections or whatever it is. But from the standpoint, medically speaking, yeah, you want to keep your body fat, your body fat in between 10% and 15%. To still be able to perform and actually have your whole body function properly from a hormonal standpoint. And females, if your body, if your body fat get too low, your hormones are gonna be all out of whack. Miss periods and cycles and stuff like that. And your estrogen levels are, I believe, they're probably lower than testosterone levels, the rays and all that stuff. You wanna have an overall balance, a hormonal balance, because your hormones get out of whack, then that's how your mental health get out of whack. But basically what I'm saying is this. We all, all of us, have some type of form of body dysmorphia. It doesn't even have to be in fitness. It doesn't even have to be, just like they said, it could be your nose. You could be insecure about your nose. You could be insecure about your freckles, your dry skin. You could be insecure about your hair, whether it's thinning, your balding, or maybe your hair is just dry and brittle and not shiny and bouncy like you want it to be. We all suffer from a form of body dysmorphia. And it just really, it really just translates to how severe it is. If it's debilitating and paralyzing, then I highly suggest you need to seek help. You need to seek help or, you know, just maybe, a ther like I said, a therapist, man. Therapy out here is highly underrated. It's highly frowned upon or whatever. We just got to find the right therapist. Uh, to help you get through your issues. A lot of times, like talking to a family member or a friend or whatever, maybe that won't help because they really kind of like, kind of like bias. Maybe they're not in the same situation you're in and you're trying to seek people to understand where you're coming from. So seeking out therapy, seeking out a doctor would be a big deal. A big deal and a big help to actually getting you through if you have severe body dysmorphia. Like me, myself, even when I'm never satisfied, because I, cause I tell you, I tell you right now, when I was, when I'm looking at those old pictures, 
and I look at those old pictures and I was looking at how even back then I still wasn't satisfied. I was like, you know what? I got the V taper, but I think I can lose a little bit more uh, uh, body fat around this area to make these abs pop out. You know what I'm saying? I need the abs to pop out a little bit more. But the thing about it is, and I realized this, no matter how I look topless, I just won't be topless. I'm a fitness guru, and my thing is, I don't, <clears throat> I won't be topless on camera. No matter what, I don't care if I got a six pack or was shredded and serrated, you know what I'm saying? Obliques, and you know what I'm saying? See every muscle fiber in my upper body. Me, at this age I'm in, I just will not be topless. Even when I went to the beach, me and my girl went to the beach. Right in the Dominican Republic, I believe I was pretty lean then. I was about 156, so I was pretty lean then. And guess what I wore? I wore a scuba a scuba top. I still didn't go topless. So even when I'm at my most ripped, I was pretty damn ripped too. I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty, I'm pretty cut. You know what I'm saying? But I still didn't go topless. And I, we we can dig into that and why I won't because I just don't I just I don't know it's just me I'm just uncomfortable being topless I don't think I have anything to really do with me being ashamed of how I look I just don't like to be topless that's just me you know what I'm saying I don't like to be topless in public so me as a fitness a, a fitness trainer coming out here you know talking about yeah man I don't want to be topless or whatever like you never see me in a tank top you never see me you know what I'm saying topless or whatever like that I, I believe you can see my body at work through my t-shirts and through my compression shirts and stuff like that that's all you get out of me though it's all you get out of me that's all you get out of me but like I said still we all suffer from a form of body dysmorphia if you have body dysmorphia keep an eye on it if it's debilitating if it's paralyzing, if it's preventing you from living your life or going to social gatherings or or any of that nature, preventing you from doing anything to improve in your life, improve in your life, you need to seek help to fix it, to help it out, to 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 so you can go out and live your life. So basically, like this episode is basically to highlight body dysmorphia. Uh and the fitness world is called muscle dysmorphia. We all have insecurities. We are all insecure about something on us. Uh, whether if it's a smidget and tiny and micron or something major that we, uh, we, 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 we poke out about ourselves. I mean, even the, the, the Hollywood elite uh, think so. Jamie Lee Curtis says she, uh, like she was uh, viewed as one of the most be beautiful women in Hollywood. And she just felt she was ugly. She felt that her face was too long and stuff like that. You got Kim Kardashian out of here who many people believe is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Who And she got plastic surgery. Her whole family basically got plastic surgery. Uh, you got Janet Jackson out there who a lot of people thought she was beautiful before she got the no job. She went and got the no job. You got a lot of people out here, man, that, that just... Jennifer Lopez even, you know, is say she works out. I'm not sure if she had any kind of medic work done, but she works out and I'm sure she has a lot of insecurity that she's working on that she wants to keep up with and why she stays fit, you know, and you know, just to keep up with the with the process, the aging process. So we all have things that we want to improve on our bodies. We all have things that we feel that needs to be improved on our body, but it's just levels to it. So if you got body dysmorphia, I'll end it on this note. If you got body dysmorphia, seek therapy, seek help. And uh, until next time, that boy Mo629, you know what it is. Start it, own it, finish it. <laughs> You've been listening to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast. Be sure to subscribe to receive new episodes. Link up with Dad Boy Mo 629 on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, or visit him at ace1warrior.com. Until next time, start it, own it, finish it.